All right, hello and welcome to Camel Finance. I'm your boy Camel, and let's open with a joke, okay? So you shorted 35k, Gareth, correct? And the plan is to short it again if it hits 38k, 40k, and 45k. And so he says the plan, as he said all along, is to short a little more at 40, then at 45, then at 50. So remember the old saying, okay, losers, average losers, do not make trades like this. Have a stop loss, respect the risk. In all seriousness, though, today I mostly want to talk about Bitcoin and gold, okay? I think those are the two things we need to focus on. So that's where the energy from this episode is going to go. Yesterday, we put out more content on this left translated cycle, right? We've done this to death over and over and over again. If you're one of the new subscribers, then of course, welcome. But also go and check these videos, okay? They go back all the way for a year. Anyone with these thumbnails in, there's plenty of them. And I've made this case and done it to death, frankly. But what's interesting about this is one of you pointed out in the comments yesterday that all in this neighborhood, okay, all in this neighborhood here, I was saying that there was a good chance we were going to see this price action. And a lot of people came at me and said, absolutely no way, this guy is mental. And then all it takes is a few thousand dollar extension up here. And suddenly everyone seems to think that this is actually feasible now. And even Bob Lucas is out here. Look at this, okay. The odds of rising for a fourth four year cycle being left translated, blow off top in early 2024. And Bob says, yeah, look, I think so, okay? And that's because as I was saying over and over again in all of those videos, as I was saying in yesterday's video as well, okay? If we do not start to base, if we do not have a sharp correction, start to build a different structure somewhere lower down, then the only possible other path that price could take is continued extension to the upside. And of course, the more we go parabolic, the more likely it is we see a left translated cycle top. And therefore, the more likely it is that we're gonna have an extended bear market decline in terms of time, not price to be clear. Of course, this throws a spanner in the works because the more people start to realize that this is a possibility, the more likely it is to catch more market participants off guard by throwing us a curveball and changing again. So as ever, one day at a time, open to anything and open to the market, proving me wrong. The good news is that Bitcoin is now back in the top 10 assets. So gold sits at the top, just under 14 trillion market cap. You can see a bunch of these mega cap stocks and stuff. And here's Bitcoin in number 10, okay? So approaching that magical $1 trillion market cap number. And it's unsurprising when we're seeing news like this, look, Brazil's biggest bank is just about to launch Bitcoin and crypto trading. If that's not enough, okay, massive, massive news because the rumors are getting louder and louder that Qatar's sovereign wealth fund is going to enter the Bitcoin market and they could be interested in purchasing up to half a trillion dollars worth of Bitcoin. Let me say that again, half a trillion dollars worth of Bitcoin. Remember, we were talking about a number of around $177 billion coming in as a result of all the spot ETFs combined. So that's 17 trillion assets under management that the ETF providers have. We're looking at 1% of that coming in in the first one to two years. And that would only equate to $177 billion versus this half a trillion dollars just from Qatar's sovereign wealth fund. Okay, so if this is to even happen, if we're to get anywhere close to this number, believe me, we are going to see a supply shock that is beyond any human's comprehension. And the reason I say that is because the human brain thinks linearly. It is not adapted. It is not well suited to comprehend exponential curves. The exponential curve of this will blow all models out of the water, including this one. And so the thing continues to be more bullish on a daily basis. I also found this. I wanted to share this. I thought it was pretty interesting. Bitcoin adjusted for inflation, won't actually break all-time high until $78,000. So remember that the 69K all-time high top that we put in for Bitcoin back in 2021, adjusted for inflation is actually $78,000. So eyes on the prize. I know a lot of people are saying things like diminishing returns and we might top at 70 to 80K this cycle. I think that Max Payne continues to be a much higher number than most people can comprehend. And like I've just shown you already, there is plenty of money gonna flow into this space. Nice chart here from TechDev, look, Every time this triggered, Bitcoin went parabolic and topped four to 10 months after the signal. Yet another example of another buy indicator flashed that suggests a parabola is coming sooner rather than later. And as I keep saying, get into this neighborhood up here and we will be able to look back at the whole of this year with hindsight and say, that was the most obvious trade of all time. Plan B's stock to flow model back inside of the standard deviation band. A lot of people were quick to say this thing was broken when it was broken to the downside. However, they had no problem saying it was broken when it was broken to the upside. Plan B now saying he thinks it's time to see this model break to the upside once more. Of course, that means given that this line here is 100K, we're going to see much, much higher numbers for the price of Bitcoin walking forward. And from Bitcoin to gold, it's time to proceed with caution in my humble opinion. Gold is on track to suffer one of the worst intraday reversal bars in 50 years. It did indeed print one of these, by the way. 
and it does not have a good track record of recovering from them. This is one of the reasons that I put this tweet out yesterday. I said, look, here's me and Metals, okay? I'm still not long gold. There's a daily cycle due in a few days and the current wick looks nasty. I will long the all-time high break. Silver, we're pushing along, but I said, I'll cut it if this breakout's gonna fail. I'll show you all this in the charts, of course, in just a minute. There's still no breakout for the senior miners. Junior miners, it's the same deal as silver, right? I'm currently long, but I'm getting ready to cut if this breakout is gonna fail. And there's still no breakout for the silver junior miners. I also wanted to show you this. This is the eight year gold cycle. The eight year gold cycle is one of the most well known cycles in all of finance. This has been my expectation and you'll note that we run the all time high, right? Just about, then we sort of roll over, make this eight year cycle low early 2023. This is 2023 right here. And then from there, it's time to do gold things. This has been the base case. If you've been on the channel before, you will have heard me talk about this. But what's interesting, since then, Bob Lucas had marked this one right here as the eight year cycle low. I never liked this because this is actually only seven years low to low. I always thought to myself, this is too early. This is seven years, not eight years, but undeniably, Bob Lucas has been trading cycles for around twice as long as I have. I've said this before, I'll say it again. When Bob Lucas and I are out of alignment, usually Bob ends up being correct while I end up being wrong. So Bob here got the eight-year cycle low marked at year seven. I never liked this, like I said, but it's interesting because as it stands right now, okay, as it stands right now, we have indeed wicked to the all-time high. We are possibly working on that rollover and a final decline into early next year. And all of this makes me wonder if indeed this low is going to end up being swept if we are going to do something like this and forming that eight-year cycle low much more close to early next year before we get that reversal. So with all that as context, right, with all that as context, let's take a good look at the gold chart. Look, for now, how can I long this? This is not a breakout, right? I've been talking about this breakout, Close daily candles above this blue box that I've got drawn that connects all these prior highs, and that's a long from me. But also, like I've been saying over and over again, this yellow squiggle has been my expectation because that right there would mark a perfect eight year cycle low for gold. It would also give the risk assets like the stock market and Bitcoin time to put in their blow off tops before they come tumbling down. And I've been saying over and over again, I wonder if that is just a bias thing. Maybe that's too good to be true. Maybe that would be too easy to exit the risk assets into this gold cycle low. But undeniably right now, this has not put in breakout retest looking for resumption higher, has it? Now it certainly could pull back into this cycle low and then break out. And again, if it does that, we'll get long. But for now, this is not a good look for gold. This is not a good look for gold, especially given that that eight year cycle low could well be sitting down here. And remember, it could certainly go a lot, lot lower down on the chart than I've got it marked. So here's the silver trade. As I said in my tweet yesterday, look, if this thing's going to fail, if this breakout is going to fail, then I'm just going to cut the trade and I'll re-enter from whenever we get another crack at this breakout line. So I'm going to give this a little bit of space into today. But if this continues to bleed lower, then I will just cut this trade and we'll just walk away with a tiny little loss and wait to go again when we next break out of here look the senior miners not broken out the junior miners is the same deal with silver right right now we're right around the breakout line we're right around hanging at break even and if we're going to continue to hold this level and push off then we'll continue to push the long but if this is going to start to close daily candles back below and this breakout is going to fail then i just want to cut this trade and we'll re-enter next time it breaks out and also as per the tweet yesterday this is the silver junior miners as you can see not broken out yet right not broken out so still waiting to see if this can happen but this is a tell right if these miners start to roll over and reject here if the breakouts start to fail and roll over then what does that tell you about the validity of this gold setup it tells you that this remains a suspect setup particularly if silver is going to roll over from here and fail as well then all of that points to a decline into the end of q1 of next year to put in that eight year cycle low for gold so it's not that difficult i don't think it just means we have to take some time see some more candles be patient not get emotional not go jumping in and out of positions for no reason right we have our lines we have our breakouts and we'll just respect them and stay as neutral and unemotional as possible the dxy into an area of interest as you can see so is it going to break out if so this could certainly pressure risk in the short term if not though if we get a rollover then expect risk to continue to come on strongly remember that three-year cycle low still sits down here so there's plenty of space to see this thing continue to the downside bitcoin is still doing bitcoin things but it's undeniable now that this cycle is getting late okay we're stretched so this is day 50 and we're going to make a day 60 cycle low so how low the pullback comes is anyone's guess but remember the closer we get to day 60 the more likely it is that we're going to have a sharp correction so we could see something healthy like this and then a reversal or if we keep doing this right then this shakeout is going to be quite violent and quite nasty either way the plan remains the same we continue to be looking to add longs and move stops up and letting the first positions finance the risk on the third position and the same is true of the miners right Miners undeniably 
going parabolic right now. Certainly very stretched, but I'm not trying to get cute with this. I'm not trying to hop in and out. All I want to do is see that pull back into the cycle low, get a swing and a reversal confirmed by a trend line breakout, and then we'll add positions and move the stops up and start to stack more and more positions so that we can have bigger exposure without taking any additional risk. The same is true in MicroStrategy, right? Look at this. It's the same chart. So again, waiting for that cycle low pullback and we'll add positions and move stops up. Riot, same deal. Marathon, same deal. Happy days. Here's oil, so still short and strong oil, as you can see, pushing this trade, and it's as simple as that, really. But look, Nice, the stock market. We've also got to point out, okay, we are late in the stock market cycle now. This is day 25, and we're expecting that day 40 cycle low around the 20th, 22nd, perhaps, of December, somewhere in that neighborhood. So I think there's a good chance we will start to see this decline now into that cycle low. How low down it goes is anyone's guess. It could be shallow, it could be deep. Either way, though, we will continue to push these longs, wait for a swing out of there, and then we can entertain adding positions depending on how low or high up the swing forms. The exact same is true of the NASDAQ, right? Seems to be putting in this pullback, but likely getting ready to find a cycle low and reverse towards the end of December. Dow Jones looks relatively stronger, doesn't it? So continuing to move up, but as always, it's likely that this thing is going to follow the rest. So probably some kind of decline and then a reversal into the end of the year. Fix. Kind of following my yellow squiggle, isn't it? We're talking about this little counter trend pop up followed by the rollover. So happy days there. And the Russell 2K, this is a really important chart. This is a really, really important chart. And the reason for that is what we're seeing out of this is breadth widening into the end of this blow off top portion of the rally. If we really are going to run the all time highs, if we really are going to create a speculative bubble that forces retail to FOMO in at all time highs and creates exit liquidity for the smart money, then we need to see breadth widen. We need to see people taking copious amounts of risk. And that includes throwing huge amounts of capital at these small caps. So we want to continue to see breadth widen. We want to continue to see small cap participation in this blow off top rally if we really have a good chance at putting in an all time high blow off top move. So this week is heating up and it's heating up quick. It's only Tuesday. Absolutely unbelievable. This is why we do what we do. This is why I love what I do so much. Member stocks, they're all following the weekend's analysis, aren't they? So long and strong there. No need to worry. No need to make any adjustments. Long and strong, as I said. For everyone else, right? You've, you, you've seen the analysis. You've seen the positions. Like I said, in terms of the risk, assets, stocks, crypto, all we're looking to do is wait for these cycle lows and swings to form. And then we'll add positions and move stops up, right? Because if we really are about to enter this blow-off top portion, the final showdown of this rally before we get some big deflationary bust early next year, then this rally should get very, very violent very, very quickly. And I don't want to get cute. I don't want to start taking profit. All I want to do is keep increasing exposure without taking additional risk. So I'm looking to add across the board over the next couple of weeks. I've just got to play patient as always whilst we wait for those cycle lows. Those of you that have been here before, right? You're probably pretty confident in this setup by now. You've seen it over and over and over again. So I'm sure your plan is similar to mine. In terms of the gold and silver markets, like I said, I want to get long, right? <laughs> it's a long time coming for this gold and silver bull market. But if the thing is going to roll over and find an eight-year cycle low, then now is just not the time. That's actually better because I'd rather exit some of the risk asset positions into the metals lower down. Whether or not the market gives me the chance to do so is anyone's guess. As always, we'll take it one day at a time. We'll respect breakouts if they occur. We'll respect the failure in breakouts if they occur as well. And as ever, we take things one day at a time. No emotions, no bias. Open to pivoting stance whenever the market proves me wrong. And on that note, until next time, I hope you're doing well in life. Take care from me. All the best. Cheers. Bye.